Can you actually get autism from a vaccine? This is a phrase that has been floating around for about 25 years, and we feel, uh, talking with docs, that it's important to talk about the facts and dispel some myths and provide information for you to make informed decisions. Welcome to Talking with Docs, I'm Dr. Brad Wien. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. And we have an important guest today, Dr. Tom Warren, an infectious disease doctor, to talk about the history of how this became a thing and where the facts really fall down. Yeah, that's, I, I mean, we're talking about the facts. Our, yes. Our, as you, if you've seen our channel before, sorry <laughs> if yeah. you're new to our channel. We're not forcing anyone to get a vaccine. No, no, we're, 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 we like to focus on the science of things and we really try and leave the politics out, which we'll also try and do in this discussion if that's possible. Yeah, but, and, but they have come to the forefront, obviously with the and recent election in the United States or in Canada, So, but it does affect us. We see lots about it. So, so let's start at the beginning. Tom, where did this, where did this, concern come from that vaccines could lead to your child getting autism which obviously as parents we're all parents here this would be concerning to us and we would do our same due diligence to find out listen i don't want to expose my kids to something that risks them getting autism but where, where did it start yeah so it really took off uh, i think it was in the late 90s in a study published in lancet lancet um, yeah and so that study purported to show that there was a link between MMR vaccine and autism. MMR, the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, that's pretty much in every nation's schedule of vaccines, isn't it? You know what's sure. ironic? Is that vaccines were created because Dr. Jenner decided to lance it. <laughs> oh, off a cow. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then that led, that led. James Pepps. <laughs> yeah. Poor Jimmy. To the smallpox vaccine. So what happened is Dr. Wakefield in the United Kingdom wrote a case series on 12 patients and provided what he thought was reasonable grounds to say that there's direct link from receiving primarily the measles, I think was the, was the measles was the main concern in the MMR vaccine that led to autism. But there were a couple problems. So A, this was not a regulated study. It was not approved by ethics. It was a case series. A bunch of the data, when they looked at it more closely, had been doctored, like timelines of, of symptom presentation, as well as the reality of some of these symptoms changed. Eight of the 12 people had did have autism or something on the spectrum, but was not confirmed by a pediatrician. Dr. Wakefield was a gastroenterologist. Mm -hmm. These kids were exposed to what was deemed to be unnecessary procedures, including colonoscopies that had very real risk. And then two other things that were really interesting, and we've always said that, if you're wondering what's going on, try to follow the money. So he was hired by a lawyer who was uh, launching a lawsuit against the, the current MMR vaccine. So that was the first thing. So he was hired there. And he also was part of a patent for a different MMR vaccine. So when things don't kind of pass the sniff test, you're like, okay. But what happened, unfortunately, is that some people grabbed onto this information. Most people, I assume, had it out of context, didn't know the details. And this became a thing. The Lancet actually retracted that article approximately 12 years later in 2010. His medical license was revoked and he no longer practices medicine. So, Well, we, we have a lot more rigorous critical appraisal techniques that we use when we're looking at research nowadays. And right. hopefully stuff like that. I mean, still some stuff gets published that maybe shouldn't in scientific journals. But for the most part, the journals, the, the articles that we base our medical decisions on are a little bit more rigorous than that nowadays yeah so, so so tom when it comes to very um very rare but serious um complications whether it be autism or guillain or something like that how does how does someone say so you have the millions of people that get it how does one person end up with something that's so severe and so different than everybody else's experience yeah it's a good question and um there's just really no way of predicting these idiosyncratic reactions but we do know that it happens with anything so whether right. it's a surgery Sure. or whether it's a, a medication as an infectious disease specialist, I, I know that with antibiotics, there's very rare side effects that people can get from antibiotics and often it's unpredictable. Right, but it's that, first time kind of thing, yeah. like, what the heck? It's that one in a hundred thousand yeah. where they just have a severe reaction. Right, and, and almost even like cancer, it's probably like multiple hits, right? It's like a genetic predisposition and then an environmental exposure and then exposure to the vaccine or the drug or whatever, a whole bunch of things working together. So autism, right. so can, are you aware of any vaccine that can cause autism as a side effect? No, there are not, none of the currently available vaccines have had been proven to have any uh, direct link to, to, to autism. So 100% debunked. So. One of the main messages we want from this video is that your choice to have a vaccine is obviously 100% yours, but you should take this information, talk to your healthcare provider, and then make an educated decision, removing autism as one of the reasons that you're not gonna get vaccinated. 
because so decades, if not centuries of literature has shown that vaccines save lives. We talked a little bit before we started filming. Vaccines are estimated to save about 3 million lives a year worldwide, did you say? That's right, right now. Which is yeah. amazing. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? And if someone invented something today that would save 3 million lives, you'd be like, let's, let's do this. This obviously makes sense. Yeah. Well, yeah. And there are side effects. You can yes. get side effects. That bad things can happen with any treatment. Autism is not one of the bad things that can happen from a vaccine. And, and you may think that's a truism because you've heard it so many times right. and that's not your fault. That's what you think is true because you've heard it over and over again on TV, online, with politicians and important people saying it. So you think it's true. But if you look back to where that came from, which yeah. was one weekly compo you know, article that wasn't really done very well, a scientific study that has since been debunked, then you realize, well, that is no, not a truism, not a truth. So you I, just have to be careful. And I think this is the plight of a world that's so focused on social media, right? Even in 2010 or whatever, so Jenny McCarthy was someone who was very famous, who had a child that had autism and felt strongly that this was the cause. Eventually, though, once she looked closer at the facts, she retracted this and now actually is very pro-vaccine and says, so listen, get your necessary vaccines to protect your children from this kind of stuff. But that's what happens, right? You end up in a bit of an, what's called an echo chamber where you surround yourself mm -hmm. with people who believe the same thing as you and you all talk about it and then it, and then it becomes real to you. And it's, it's really complicated. It's not just vaccines. It's so many things in our world. We did a video recently about fluoride and it's the same kind of the same kind of thought that like let's let's focus on where the evidence lies and then make an educated decision um but not fear-mongering so dr horn what do you quote people for like risk of a complication of certain of vaccines like you say oh this is like a one in a thousand one in a million one in ten thousand what's the order of magnitude yeah so for the common things like you know pain at the site it, you know it's it's 10 20 percent right uh for for less common uh or very rare you know things like guillain-barre it's often you know one in a 500,000 or one in a million. Okay. Um, so the, the, the very serious complications are known to be very rare. Okay, and Guillain-Barre is a neurologic disorder that is acquired and can paralyze you, land you in the ICU, and usually uh, resolves after a period of time with supportive measures, but it's right. very devastating when it does occur. Um, okay, so very rare. So the lesser side effects, pretty common. The big, bad, serious ones, very, very rare. Yeah, and that's what people are going to have to decide for themselves. Not only the reason to get a vaccine to protect yourself, but certain vaccines protect others. So kind of that thought of a herd immunity or doing your community responsibility, those vary between the vaccines. And certainly you need to be aware of which ones actually make a difference for that kind of stuff. And again, that's a conversation for you and your healthcare provider. But it's important to recognize that autism is not a complication of vaccines. Autism occurs. We're not saying it doesn't occur. It does occur. There's a spectrum. Sure. Um, I'm not a pediatrician specializing in that. But I do have looked at the data and I do feel strongly that yeah. autism is not a risk of a vaccine. There you Sorry. go. Now you know, if you have a comment or thought about this, please leave it in the comments below. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. And thanks to Dr. Warren for joining Thank us. You. See you next time.